Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever this is going over the airway. This is Tuesday, and I pray and I hope that when your eyes open today, the first thing that rolled off of your lips was thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to get it right, just in case I missed something on yesterday. You thought enough of me to keep me here to make amends, and I do thank you for that. You may be getting uh, ready to do breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Whatever your endeavor is today, I ask you, if you don't mind, to give me a few moments, and I ask you to open your ears and radiate your mind and let it flow on down to your heart, and let the heart pump the word of the day. And the word of the day is partaker. You know, the world nowadays want to partake in everything that's wrong. <laughs> it seems like whatever's going against the word of God, that's what I want to partake in. I don't trust the word of God anymore. I don't believe in the word of God anymore. I believe in what I hear the news say or what I here on YouTube, what I, what I hear somebody just tell me. But the thing that we need to partake in, and we never should have left it, was the Word of God. That's what we need to partake in. So today, let us look at the definition of partaker. Formally, a person who consumes or indulge in something, a person who joins in the activity or action of something, to partake in our experiences, something along with others. Partake. We want to partake in that peace, whatever it may be. Now, Let's look at what the Bible defines partaker as. To receive and share. <laughs> when you partake in the word of God, you're not supposed to be selfish with it. You're supposed to share it. The saints are partakers of Christ Jesus and of those heavenly things that we are called to partake in. Now, if you don't know the heavenly things that you are called to partake in, that means you don't know the Word of God. So it behooves us to get into the Word. By receiving Jesus Christ and His Spirit into our hearts, that's the partaker, is to receive Christ Jesus in your heart. And let him be the guiding force of everything. They possess them and their blessings and influences. Their owns are effectively called to a heavenly glory. Are you partakers in Jesus Christ? Has he planted himself in your heart? Have you allowed him to do so? Let's look at what 1 Timothy 5.22 said. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Mm. Reference to approval. You know, we really want to elevate folks. We want to elevate them because they have done something or said something or act a certain way or that they are the status quo. But lay hands suddenly on no man. Reference to approval. True repentance will soon bring about true results. You don't have to <laughs> elevate no man. 
Because if truth lives in him, truth is going to exit out of him. If truth does not live in him, then wrong will definitely exit out of him. And will be observed. You will be able to observe it. That debunks the word, nobody has the right to judge nobody. <laughs> Neither be partakers of other men's sin. Who are you hanging around with? Who do you know is sinning, living in sin, committing sin, they don't care who are you hanging around in. The Bible says, neither be partakers of other men's sin. That means you need to flee that person. If a person refuses to repent and approval is given to that person, mm, mm, that means you need to flee. The preacher gives the approval, then become, becomes a partaker of the sin. That means if a person refuses to repent of that sin and you don't flee from them, you are a partaker of that man's sin. If you know that that person is sinning and you don't say anything, you are a partaker of that man's sin. Then becomes a partaker of that sin. Being committed. Don't you ever think, you know, it ain't none of my business. Oh, yes, it is. As a believer, yes, it is. Keep yourself pure which can be done only by understanding that our faith must ever be in the cross. See, if your faith is in the right place, you're going to flee from sin. You're not going to even deal with it. You're just going to get your purse or your hat and you're going to leave. Which then gives the Holy Spirit the power to give us victory. See, we can't have victory if it doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. We cannot have victory if we have not repented of our sin. We cannot have victory if we hanging around sinful people. Do you have victory this day in your life today do you have it even though you may be down in a valley with no way to climb up out of there but you know that down in that valley is victory because jesus is with you because you are a partaker of god's truth and God's righteousness. You have allowed the Holy Spirit that he left back here to lead and guide you in everything that is first right and then true. So let us remember the last portion of the verse. Neither be partakers of other men's sin. Keep yourself pure by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you in everything that is first right and then true. Are you letting the Holy Spirit be your guide today? Who is to help us stay pure? And nothing and nobody else can help us stay pure but the Holy Spirit because he was given a job to do and that job does it keep us on straight street? And if the Lord Jesus Christ says the same, I will see you on Wednesday. Be safe, be blessed, and be partakers of the word of God and only the word of God. Bye-bye.